Hi everyone, this is New Beer Watcher. It is June 2nd, 2018, and I have something that is going to completely blow everyone's mind. So, I have mentioned before in many videos about, I'm just going to jump right in, about the lens array and camera distortions. We might have two different things here. Let's look at these lens distortions that I showed in my previous videos. The subscriber that sent me this video believed that there was two cloaked spaceships that were docking towards each other. So he gets out his camera and videotapes it. And watch what he catches with this. And wait a minute. Watch it lis and listen. I think we get to hear this. Not every lens distortion camera has. Yeah. Catching this one, folks. So. Looks like we probably got a lot more in the background. But then we got the camera distortion in this lens. And this continues to dark next in this next evidence that was submitted to me can you hear the distortion on the camera the auto adjusting is affecting it now I had said once that this was the lens array in deep space but I think there's something even more amazing to this because nothing could have been light space it's just bizarre, right? Oh, but I'm going to tie this all together. Here's some more proof. More lens distortions. Look at how it waves. Let me pause this for a second. I also want to notice a little clue here. Look at this cloud formation, by the way. How it's big circular cloud. Okay? You're going to you're gonna like this one. So, and this just, you can hear the distortion here. That people are noticing these strange clouds. Sometimes in a clear blue sky. And then we get this lens distortion. Look at this light being bent. Oh, I think there's more to it than that, but that's where it's gonna get good. So hang in there. Here's the final proof. Another, look at this camera. Just absolutely freaks out. Again, you get that same buzzing noise. Let's clear that one again. Please listen. Wow, that was strange. Oh, sorry. Okay, you ready for the answer on this one? Here is the next big clue. Here's what I think it is. It is a giant torus field. The same way that petals are wrapped around a rose, or a nonalist shell spirals outwards. Yes. In this pie... All in nature, the Fibonacci sequence, the golden triangle, it's all the same thing. All Taurus, all energy follows in this field. In this demonstration, this is another Taurus field. Basically a donut. Our base 10 decimal system is not man-made. Rather, is created by this flow of energy. Oh, yes, yeah, so all energy Our is base flowing. I want to point out two things in this because we're going to show you the next what I believe is happening in these toroidal fields. But who, what's creating these toroidal fields, these torus fields? That at one side of the torus field, you have the central pellet energy, the collapsing, compressing, cooling magnetic charging energy. On the other side, it's expanding, heating what the world would call a ion. And this is the positive side, this is the negative side. And this is Our the base cycle. decimal system is not man-made. Massive torus Rather, is created by this flow of energy. Okay. So, I'm going to show you a video that I took down in my own house. In case you didn't see it, I'm trying to say, do you see the cloaked ship? Now, you're, of course you don't see it because it's cloaked. But what you will see 
is an outline of it. I'm going to try and make it real obvious for you. So I'm just going to draw a little line around this. Pause the video. It's pretty straight line. These clouds appeared over my house. Do you see this circular object right here? These are the cloud machines. And another triangular craft right here. And another one here. They're the ones that made these clouds. Oh, I've got UFO footage that's going to back this all up. Just keep watching. So I move the camera around. Now do you see the the hidden ships? And when I say they're cloaking themselves, they don't want to see show you this empty space in the perfect shape of a spaceship. And keep in mind, this whole wide cloud thing, all that disappeared in, in a matter of minutes. And it was a clear blue sky. This little pot mark signature, that's it, folks. We, there you go. Can you get any more of a straight line than that? Look at this. You hope you guys can see these lines here. That is not formed naturally in nature. How come clouds keep forming these things? Okay, I was not a big believer or really big on this stuff. So, check this out. I'm going to show you some more about this holographic universe cubic waveform theory that we're actually in. So, let's watch the compilation of these toroidal fields in action. And before I go any further with this compilation video, I got to show you a picture of what most people are aware of, the TR-3B craft. And this is where the toil field sits, right here. I did already made a video on how this is made. This is the toroidal field, and emanating from this, you're going to get this massive toroidal field. That one side is going to suck in and compress and make clouds, while the other one expands it back out. And this would basically extend this huge toroidal field all the way down to the ground, and I have UFO proof of it. And this is what we're going to watch in the compilation of UFOs. So, and then I'm going to explain how these crafts levitate and how they were made. So you guys all saw this one. There's your toroidal field. Here is more of the toroidal fields. These torta fields could, on one side of the field, as the central pedal forces would collapse and compress the atmospheric moisture into water droplets forming clouds. Because, check this one out. We can see the spinning torta fields on this. You know, I, some of you may actually think this is photoshopped, but it's actually, you can look very closely at the spinning toroidal electric energy forming around this craft, forming this bubble as it travels through this. In fact, you can even see it float like a bobble. Now, it's not being hung from a string, okay? It's just classic. The magnetic fields are floating on these surfaces of the ship. Look at the spinning vortexes on each one of these bands of energy surrounding this whole ship, enveloping it. You want to think that's photoshopped just keep watching some of the rest of them how about this one massive cloud appeared how about this one these are the portal ones people keep talking about i want to show you something real quick here if you look real careful right in the very center of this craft you see a perfect triangle that looks like the tr3b but a probably a bigger version i don't think it was going into another dimension it was docking inside the ship itself because it's cloaked. Make it look like a portal. Look at this one. Same toroidal field. That's why I just these things have the perfect signature of these toroidal energies. Again, I believe another triangular shaped craft. 
taking energy from the earth through three vortices coming off the ship for stability. Two would work. You have three or four, like a quadcopter, whatever, for navigation stability. Otherwise, it would flip and spin around. <laughs> yeah, look at that. Look at those vortices, man. And just trying to videotape this is going to have you give some weird camera uh, abnormalities as well because of the magnetic field affecting the recording disc inside your recording. It's going to mess with it. Look at this one. More toroidal fields. And look at this drone ship flying over it. We know that's a drone. You can see the back of his tail. I slow this down. I'm going to go back to full speed. You can catch just how fast this was. You know the government's, the government's in on it. You save the best. I'll try and give you the best first, but, you know, I'm going to speed this up. You can see the spinning turtle fields on this craft as well. I believe this thing's actually sitting on its side right here. Okay, I'm going to speed this up. You can see it in full speed. And we're going to zoom in. We're going to see this bands of energy. And look at this thing just shuts down right after the craft passes by, too. <laughs> wow. See the drone, the government drone ship. Only the government has drones like this. We've seen those ones we do in Iraq. You know what's scary? Those drones are flying around in cities. Right? You fast forward us a little bit. We see this dancing. There's that drone flying by once again. <laughs> wow. You know, I normally like to cover UFO unless I can find some new discoveries. I know everybody knows about UFOs. I wouldn't want to bore you with another stupid UFO video. But how about this one? Another giant spaceship, Toriel Field. This one, we got the sounds. Many people over. You see how the vortex is sucking in the clouds here in this Toriel Field? These things are huge. This is what they call anti-gravity. I don't believe in gravity. Sometimes I have a hard time using a word that levitation is like levitation. So here we can see the clouds being sucked into this tutorial field as well. Anyway, so this is fake. It was even on the news. This particular person didn't even have an excuse for what that was. Here's another announcement. Seen hovering high over Moscow Wednesday evening, scientists have rejected claims of UFO activity, saying the white cloud was no more than an optical illusion. Optical illusion. Moscow, yeah, okay. Yeah, many people have seen this one. When I board the toil fields here, but look at the high energy mm -hmm. it, it things create in the process. Right? It's all about toil fields. Now, explained in my other video, I'll go over it at the end of this video for those who are still interested. This one is really compelling. If you want to even try and call Photoshop, I want to look very careful at this one. First of all, I want you to notice the cloud matches the perfect reflection of the clouds on the mirror. You have a shadow on the ground. Here's the best part. You get the little toroidal vortex spinning right at the beginning of this thing when it takes off. Look, keep your eye right at this arrow right here. Watch this little vortex. <laughs> See that vortex right there? Let me show you that again. Vortex. <laughs> yeah, that looks legit to me. I mean, sometimes it just looks too just some good pictures, man. That's fantastic. It's following a guy too, right? Look at that vortex. How do you make that stuff up? Look into the wind underneath this thing. Oh. Wow. Now. Let's get into how they make these levitation devices. It all started in <laughs> It all started in nineteen ninety four when they created a atom laser. They would superheat atoms and then separate them and then put them into this chamber here and using a low frequency red laser they would beam this atom, compressing it, cooling it, and then after it reached almost absolute zero, they put it in a magnetic evaporator cup. They were able to push the free so-called atoms, or I'm going to call them scalar waves or cubic waveforms, which I'm going to get into later. 
and they lowered the magnetic field and the leaving only the hot ones behind making it further cooler but they also what they did now they did the same thing but with mercury and when they cool it this is what happens to all the random vibrational scalar waves scalar waves that have no time lag it's like two people can a stick two guys holding a stick pulling it back and forth in a wave-like fashion outside of time and as the waveform as it cools the frequency goes lower and lower and to a point where all the frequencies are matching and they actually will synchronize at the same wavelength sorry and we could see them now at a singular wavelength this is now called the Bose Einstein condensate or BEC this mercury based or super atom is spun around in a toroidal field like a donut shaped device as because it's got mercury it will be affected by the magnetic fields spinning near the speed of light giving it its toroidal field and its magnetic lift then we get let's see get this demonstration Okay, so the way these basically work is these crafts all have the ring shape, the toroidal field inside the center of this thing, and it creates a low pressure wave in front of it, pressing in, and a vacuum in the front with a pressure wave in the front. And when this toroidal field gets turned on, it sets up a it sets up a shield around it so everything inside this field stays the in the same environment that it left in so once this field sets up 1g the atmospheric pressure the acceleration everything stays the same so as this thing begins to accelerate this thing still has these people inside would feel no wind no g forces or anything it just slips through the bubble through the scalar and it's gaining scalar energy as it travels up to 100 G's and can completely stop. Here is a, and a quick animation of it. You can see how it's slipping through. So I'm going to call it the ether of space. But what is it traveling through? This material that it's traveling through. Well, let's get back to the cubic waveform theory again. That goes into, uh, let's start with this one. In the cubic waveform theory, this mirror of light shows the, the world basically as a hologram. And in this experiment or demonstration, we have six mirrors on a cube with a light and shiny in the center. And we're going to see the cube basically reflects and repeats itself, showing throughout the entire universe. And this is how the entire universe is created. We look at it and everything is just a projection. We look inside, we see endless spheres. Well, each one of these lines, as they communicate instantaneously from one point to the next, that would be like a scalar wave, slipping through these waves. And so we could see this amazing repeating the galaxies over and over again in this holographic universe. It is pretty, well, it's not too hard to understand. It's just showing how everything constantly repeats itself. Throughout all of nature, we're going to keep seeing this pi wave here. No matter how much we zoom in on it, we keep seeing the same wave. Again and again, it spirals and it repeats itself. We keep seeing the same spot, no matter how much you zoom in or how much you zoom out from the deep space all the way down, down to the molecule. Everything just keeps repeating itself. Another theory with the holographic universe is that all the information of everything is in the tiniest of the smallest thing. And in this hologram, this person has a holographic plate. And we can see he you'd think he'd be cutting the picture in two. Instead, he gets 
a, just a smaller picture. Or ha you, you cannot cut it in half. The entire picture is in there. And he cuts it smaller and smaller. And we can we got to tilt the light just right. So we see this hologram here. And it's the same hologram. This hologram right here. Then he cuts it again. And he'll show it. No matter how small he cuts it, it's the same thing. You can't cut a hologram in half. You just, no matter how tiny you small, you cut it. Just like a seed has the information of the everything in the tree, like a human being has all the information of the blood in its tiniest blood cell. It just echoes out through all of the universe. Check out holographic universe. You're gonna find some real truth in that. Let me show you an animation of the cubic waveform theory. So we have a cathode plane that rotates in one direction and slows down, admits all its energy to the vacuum plates, to the QR cube. It repeats itself over and over again, depending on what molecule would determine the frequency. And this is how they're connected. This is our real universe. Each one of these cubes will represent, represent the actual molecule. This is what's happening, pure energy. These are the anode points reflecting on the cathode, they expand out, all the universe reflects this cubic waveform field. And as long as you want to continue believing in the atom and electron and the proton and the neutron, the more you'll be confused about anti-gravity. When you understand this scalar technology, it's hard to even find an example how it really works. A scalar wave, again, would be like two people holding a stick, pulling it back and forth rhythmically with no time lag. Sorry. And we could see again, see how we connected. And as these will shrink to a, a sphere and back into a cube and a sphere, but it all happens near the speed of light. You'll have doubt. Well, this is what it looks like. And they had, many had believed that these rings were the electrons, but those are basically sound waves. It's sound, wave, electromagnetic energy. And as far as light is concerned in this ether, kind of symbolic of this pool of water, each molecule, no matter how big or small in this universe filled, if anything was to interact on this side with these molecules would send a shock wave all the way to the other side of the universe. And that's what basically these crafts are slipping through, these cubic wave fields. Everything's filled with energy, electric fields. And as the UFO craft travels through these waves, it actually picks up more energy because space is not empty. So I'm going to pick this up here. As it travels through, it's also traveling through the electric field lines, gaining more power and slips through almost what appears to be zero point energy. And to avoid any confusion, the lens array, I believe, are still there. These ones here, I don't think, are creating the electromagnetic disturbance. It could be a still different craft. The ones that we saw, I just don't think they'd have that many craft sitting there. We didn't see no weatherman modification or anything. So I still think those are made by JPL and they may have may do maybe they do have levitation technology to hold them there in space anyways I hope you like this video please copy like and share and have a blessed day